Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Thiemann of the NX Labs at Bar-Ilan University. In the first part of our lecture, we discussed the basic overview of how to run LVS. Now we're going to start step by step going through those different stages and see different problems and solutions to them. This part is creating the LVS ready Verilog netlist. Okay, so basically writing out the Verilog netlist should be a pretty straightforward type of thing. Inside our place and route tool, we have the connectivity between all of the different blocks. We have all the gates and everything and all the IP that make up our, um, our thing and uh, our, our design here. And we actually run some sort of a connectivity check or LVS internally inside our place and route tool. And all we have to really do is write that netlist out. So we get some sort of a format. Um, in this case, a structural Verilog format is the common thing used in industry. Okay, so um, the basic command inside of uh, Inovis in the common UI stylus uh, type of a mode is write netlist. Okay, and the main thing about write netlist is we have uh, the name of our netlist, which I'm going to call my module.v over here. But there are many problems that arise in that. We have problems with global net connectivity, bus notation, assigns, flipped buses, excluded instances, excluded hierarchical blocks, and I'll be discussing most of these. So our first problem is missing global nets. So the issue is like this. Logical connectivity, or our gate level netlist, doesn't require power nets, but CMOS gates assume the existence of some sort of a logic one and a logic zero, like a VDD and ground type of a, of, a, of a power rail that connects to these CMOS gates. But these logic levels, they may come from different voltage sources if we have a more um, complex design than a, just a straightforward design. Okay, so the solution is to use the minus fizz flag in the right netlist command, or in whatever place and route tool you're using, it's actually to find whatever option will write out the actual um, voltages that connect to our global power nets um, to the design. Okay, but that's not generally enough. First, you need to initialize the uh, these global nets. So a global net is kind of a, a net that the whole design knows about it has a certain name it can be named whatever it doesn't have to be named vdd or ground it could be named my global net or something like that um, but in our standard cells for example we'll have these types of vdd and ground pins and we have to tell the tool that listen we have this global net called my global net and it should connect to vdd and ground pins um, i'll just give you kind of a, a an explanation of that type of a thing so let's say i have uh, these two rails and this one's called my vdd for example and this one would be called my ground and that's just a uh, that's the global net name it's a name we give it at a top level and then we have the standard cell inside which inside the standard cell this guy's called vdd and this guy's called ground and we have to tell the tool listen my ground connects to ground of the standard cell and my vdd connects to uh, vdd of this standard cell but you have to understand that there could be something like my vdd2 in, in a different power domain or something like that. And the standard cell over here, it still is the same library. So it's also called VDD in ground. So we have to tell it somewhere that my VDD2 connects to VDD pins of these standard cells. And the same goes for um, for macros of different types. So we have some sort of a of an analog block here that has maybe a VDD1 that should connect to, uh, that should connect to my VDD. And then maybe it has a VDD2 here that should connect to my VDD2. Okay, so these my VDD and uh, two and my VDD, they're just these global nets. They're these uh, logical names for the net at the top, and we have to initialize them. Um, in Inovis, it's done using this set db init ground nets and set db init power nets commands. It can also be done inside the CPF and UPF formats. Okay, um, so once we've defined that these exist as my VDD and my VDD2 and so forth, then we have to connect them to the right pins and that in uh, Inovis is done with um, connect global nets and it can also done, be done inside the CPF UPF format. And to verify this, we'll take a look at the design browser and I'll show you that in a few minutes with a, a, in, an example on a, a real design. So that's one problem. Another problem is assigns. So as you know that there's a, an assign keyword in Verilog and we use it quite often. We um, connect two nets together or uh, provide some sort of a uh, mathematical or a binary type of a logic that goes from one net to another using the assign keyword. It's pretty frequent. Um, many gate level tools though, they don't like assigns. So basically assign is a type of an RTL and we want in gate level to have a, a completely structural design. It shouldn't have any assigns in it. Synthesis usually does and should get rid of these assigns, but it doesn't always some things just like connecting two nets together. It may leave the assign in there. 
Um, well, V2LVS, which is a tool we'll discuss in a little while, it'll convert some of the assigns into um, a spice level, like a, a connect in, connecting command, which is star.connect, which we'll see later. later. Um, but LVS will sometimes fail. For example, an assign connecting two inputs. So if we have something like this, so we may have a, a design where we have, uh, this is input one, and this is input two, and here we have this uh, dot connect that's connecting input one. And so we have a star dot connect in one, in two in our spice file. I've seen uh, many types, well, I guess there's no uh, semicolon there. I've seen many LVS tools that will actually fail due to a thing like that. So we want to just get rid of the assigns. So then this will not appear in LVS. How do we do this? Well, it's done again in synthesis. And the way it's done usually in synthesis is in a sign like a sign B equals A, it just turns into a buffer. So we just put a standard cell buffer. It costs us the extra couple of transistors there, but it's worth getting rid of it so we don't have these problems in LVS. Um, if it's not removed by our synthesis tool, then we should do it inside our place and route tool. And in Novus, there are several ways. So first of all, there's this set init remove assign type of a variable, which when we do init design is supposed to remove the assign commands by inserting buffers. And it, if not, and just to make sure we can remove them again after placement. So you do delete assigns minus add buffers buffer and it will take these and remove them. So that's a, a second important thing is make sure you get rid of the signs or else you might have failures in your LVS way on down uh, downhill. Okay, problem number three is bus notation. So the issue is this. Verilog uses square brackets for vectors. So we have this vector called my signal, um, which is a 32-bit vector. So it, it has these square bra brackets, 31 to 0. Um, and uh, that's a, it's connected to this D out signal, which is defined as an output with uh, or a wire with um, 32 bits. Okay. Tr Unfortunately, Virtuoso uses triangular back brackets. And so we would have something like this. So this block, it has a bus that's 32 bits, but it's uh, using triangular brackets. And the signal itself is also 32 bits, but using triangular brackets. And uh, remember that uh, Dr. J versus Larry Bird, we're, we're, we're in the year 2020 right now. And these types of things can still confuse EDA tools. So we want to get rid of them. Okay. Well, the solution, if you're using a, a, an, an analog flow, um, a custom design flow to make your macros um, using Virtuoso, there's a, a, a form here that's called CDL out. And in the CDL out form, there's a, a little checkbox here that says map bus names from triangular brackets to square brackets. And you should just check that before you, um, you export your net, your, your net list. Um, so if you do that the, as an analog designer, as a custom block designer, then it should be okay. Your CDL will have uh, these square brackets. Um, if not, then we'll show you later some ways to get around this as well as the LVS guy. Okay, so problem number four, flip buses. So digital tools use Verilog and often consider buses as multi-bit vectors. Analog circuits use SPICE and don't necessarily use vectors. So it's the same situation we had before with that 32-bit uh, vector. It, it's very clear in Verilog that this is going to be usually some sort of a, uh, of, a, of a string that represents a binary number. Um, but uh, on the other hand, in Virtuoso, it will really consider each of these, uh, often it will consider each of these um, signals as something separate because, for example, where the pins are, we have to connect each pin separately and so forth. So we don't always kind of combine them into one sort of vector. Um, another thing is that both Spice and, uh, and Verilog, they both uh, support connectivity by position. Connectivity by position is a really bad thing. It means that when we instantiate um, types of blocks, we don't have to necessarily say which uh, pin each signal is connected to. We can just use it by the position of the signal, and that can really cause uh, real big problems if we make all kinds of changes and things that even the tools automatically do, which we'll see here. Um, furthermore, it's really hard to debug if we use connectivity by position, but often the tools do it. I don't know why. Maybe because they want to reduce the, the size of the files that come out, but it's really not worth it. So just an example of what can happen. In Virtuoso, we have this, uh, this D out bus, which is uh, three bits. And when we do export CDL, it came out like this. We get this sub circuit command in, in Spice, um, which has three pins. And it just decided for some reason to put the pins by position, D out zero, D out one, and D out two. That's just how it did it. And uh, we actually may not have much of a, of a say as to how it exported it from the, um, from the net listing tool. 
On the other hand, when we did write net list in Inovus, we have this block and it has, uh, it's connected to my net and my net is a vector of three bits. So it's really the square brackets with two to zero. And when we write that out, what we see is that it, um, it instantiated it, or it was, uh, it was taken by V2LVS and it was turned into, and I'm using the connectivity by name, which is the better way to use where you use uh, dollar pins inside the spice net list. And you see that what happened was it decided that this was actually from MSB to LSB, which is the kind of more logical way to do it. But this was from LSB to MSB. And so it says, aha, the first one should connect to that one. The second one should connect to that one. The third one should connect to that one. And that's what it did. D out zero um, is connected to my net two. D out one is connected to my net one and D out two to my net zero. Uh, because there's a mixture here of triangular and square brackets, that also may cause trouble, but I just kept it that way so you could see which came from the uh, from the custom netlist uh, and which came from the Verilog netlist. Our previous slide should tell you that we should fix this thing too, so they'll all be square brackets. Anyway, what we have here is this mix-up, and we have the wrong connections over here, and that's really bad. Um, again, it will cause our, our LVS to fail. It's not a, a real failure that we didn't have a wrong connection inside our place and route tool, but LVS will see it is a wrong connection and then we can't verify our design so the solution is pretty simple in this case um, in Inovus we have this minus flatten bus option of the right netlist command so if we use right netlist and we add the minus flatten bus what it'll do it'll explicitly write out each of these signals so now when we do this um, we get our, our Verilog netlist it's not written out in the vector format it has d out 2 is one connection and it connects it to my net 2 which it knows should be the connectivity d out 1 and my net 1 d out 0 my net 0 and when this is uh, gone through v2 lvs we see that d out 0 is connected to my net 0 d out 1 to my net 1 d out 2 to my net 2 and that solves the problems it does cause v2 lvs to complain because it didn't expect to have so many um, uh, bits or something like that but you have to kind of disregard those warnings Okay, the next problem is what I call excluded instances. So a lot of the physical cells that we have inside our um, design, they don't have a corresponding CDL in the library. For example, fillers, okay, fillers, they're just uh, something that has a kind of an N well and some and P plus and N plus type of layers that just fill in our, our rows. IO fillers, they have the whole thing that uh, makes the IO rings uh, connect and so forth. Corner IOs, again, that makes the, 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 these rings turn. Bond pads. So these types of things, they don't actually have any um, logical, uh, they don't do anything logical. They may not have any active devices in and so forth. And so they don't come with a, uh, a, spice, um, a spice file that says what, they, what their logical structure is. Well, that's a problem because when we run V2LVS, we have to um, translate these into spice and they don't, it doesn't find them. So these are uh, IPs basically that don't have a spice netlist and then we can't make a, a, a we can't do the V2LVS. So uh, what we have usually in, in our, when we do right netlist minus physical, we get these empty kind of uh, instantiations. Filler two is called fill one, two, three, and it doesn't have any connectivity. Corner, top left corner, it doesn't have any connectivity. And there is no spice file for corner or for filler two, and then V2LVS will uh, basically error out. Okay, well, solution. One solution is to use the minus exclude instances of cells option of right netlist. So if we give it a, a long list, for example, filler two and corner and all the types of things that we don't have a spice netlist for, it just won't write them into the netlist. And that's a that's a really good solution. Option two is to post process, process them away. So this is something that's not really recommended, but we often um, do it in the end. So uh, we take our netlist that comes out, it could be either on the Verilog or on the spice netlist, and we use SED or Python or something like that to just remove all of these. Uh, uh, for example, in this case, We'll say um, anything that is filler, remove that line and the line after it, and it will erase it. And we just hope that our uh, type of script is robust enough that it doesn't break something else. And that's why it's not very recommended because it probably does break something else. If something can break, it will. And the third option is is really uh, also another way to do it, a kind of a clean way. It's to create uh, empty subcircuit definitions so you can provide an include file that has these empty subcircuits. We can just write subcircuit filler two, subcircuit corner, and include it in our uh, V2LVS type of a process, and then it just won't put anything in instead of them. So that was uh, creating the LVS ready Verilog netlist, and now I'll go and show you some of the things in uh, in an actual design. 
So to give you a short example of uh, the, the things that we um, talked about in the previous slides, I'll go over to a, a, a Linux terminal, and I have a design that's called Leo One Top here. And um, what we're going to do is show some of the things I talked about. So um, let's start with uh, looking at the Innovus, um, the Innovus instantiation of our, um, of our block. And this is a picture from Innovus of our... Um, of our Leo One top chip, and one of the ways to check if uh, if our global nets are actually connected, we can go to the design browser over here, and we can look inside. And I have conveniently chosen one of our uh, blocks, this one, uh, which is our power on detector, and we get the instance over here. And when I look down into it, one of the things inside is PG pins. And when I look at the PG pins, we see that it has several PG. Uh, pins over here on this block and they have to be connected to global nets and we see that the VSS is indeed connected to um, the VSS of the chip but for example the VCCA the analog VCC of this is connected to a um, uh, global net called pod VDDA and uh, VCC 1.2 is connected to uh, VDD so we see that these guys are actually um, defined inside Innovus so we made these connections and that will um, usually help us when we export the Verilog netlist that they'll be connected to each other so we will um, write the write netlist command and um, we're going to give it a name leo one top fizz because it has the physical pins inside so we use this minus fizz flag we're going to uh, exclude uh, leaf cells we don't want to try it in the leaf cells we want to flatten the bus as we discussed before we want to exclude instances of cells where we have filler cells corner cells antenna diodes and bond pads we don't want to write them out and once i write that into the Innovus command line it says it wrote out everything it gave all kinds of maybe uh, different warnings that we'd have to go over and finally um, it finished so um, that being said we can go back to our terminal and we can um, see that we actually have now this leo one top physical cell and um, i uh, have opened it in uh, i will open it inside a, a vi terminal so um, let's see what our leo one top physical here is and um, if I go and I look for that uh, uh, pod VDD, for example, um, I will s see that there's this pod VDD A, sig A signal, and I can search for it. And I can see that at some point um, it was actually input into the VCC A um, port of this uh, of this instance of uh, Afeld pod top Leo sock. So I see that. Um, really, what came the Verilog that came out of um, out of uh, Innovus? It actually covers what I wanted. Just another thing we can see here that this flattened bus it actually took all of these uh, big um, buses and it put them uh, as uh, single signals rather than collecting them into a, um, a long vector, which is another thing that we wanted. Okay, um, so these are the types of things that we discussed before. So another important point is we said when we do the CDL out, so if I open up for Tuozo and I do um, file export CDL, I get the CDL out form. And on the CDL out form, as we saw before, um, if I scroll down over here, there's this map bus names from triangular to square brackets, and I should click on that before I export whatever CDL I want to put out. So those are just a few things to show you um, as examples from the parts that we discussed in this part of the lecture.